I want to help decrease failure rates for NREMT, for EMT school, for paramedic school. Watch these videos, watch this content, and believe me, you will start to understand EMS medicine. Anybody out there that wants to serve their community as an EMT or a paramedic should be able to do that. And I'm here as a paramedic coach to help you achieve that. Hey, so you got a patient that's in altered mental status. So look, any patient in altered mental status, there's four S's you gotta know. Sugar, seizure, stroke, sepsis. See you tomorrow. Never forget your airway steps again. First, you gotta open, then you gotta clear, then you gotta keep, then you gotta ventilate. That's how you do it. You gotta never forget your blood thinners. Cumin, you already know that. Two P's, Plavix, Pradaxa. Another example, the S, Eloquist Rental, Help. Then you have the E, you have the P, you have the H, L, Heparin, Lovenox. So if your patient is in cardiac arrest, there's only a few rhythms they can be in. Shockable, VT, VF, no shock, asystole, and PEA, that is cardiac arrest. Calcium treats three things, hyperkalemia, hypocalcemia, and calcium channel blocker overdose. Okay. Magnesium, what does that treat? Think three different pathways again. Cardiac, respiratory, OBGYN, there it is. Benzos and EMS, there's three benzos you need to know. Valium, Ativan, Versed. They treat seizures, mental health, and sedation. Remember, they all end in AM. Three meds you need to know in EMS. Adenosine, think chemical cardio version. Metaprolol is a beta blocker, and Carazem is a calcium channel blocker. That is your SVT. Here's a big, big, big tip to pass your boards. Ready? You have to know the difference between stable and unstable. It is mental status and blood pressure. If the systolic's under 90, they're unstable, they get shocked, not meds. Part two of how to pass a CLS. Your patient is in sinus bradycardia at a rate of 40. They have chest pain with a blood pressure of 120 over 70. What are you gonna do? Atropine, 0.5 milligrams. IV. How to pass ACLS part three. Okay, so your patient is in VTAC with a pulse, 130 over 70. What do you do next? Amiodarone IV drip, 150 milligrams over 10 minutes. How to pass ACLS part four. We have to remember the difference between defib and synchronized cardioversion. Think about it. The patient is in cardiac arrest, VTAC, VFib, that's the defib. Hey, I got a quick tip about 12 lead EKGs. Think contiguous leads. Lead 1 AVL, they're friends. 2, 3 AVF, they're friends. V1, V2 are friends. V3, V4 are friends. V5, V6, they're friends. Okay, watch this and never forget arteries and veins again. So think arteries. Arteries, A for away. Well, there's only one other thing. The opposite away is towards. Veins go back to the heart. Quick tip for anybody who is an EMT or paramedic. If your patient, if your patient has a wheeze, they have wheezing in their lungs, think AAC, asthma, and phylaxis, COPD. See you tomorrow. Low levels of corticosteroids, cortisol and aldosterone causes progressive weight loss, anorexia, general weakness as well. And finally, if they're in crisis, they actually carry injectable hydrocortisone. If you're getting ready for paramedic school, there's three receptors you gotta know cold. Alpha-1 is gonna vasoconstrict, increase blood pressure. Beta-1 is gonna increase the heart rate. Beta-2, we have two lungs, opens the lung fields. Hey, I found this brand new thing when it comes to studying that is crazy. It's called alpha waves. If you use alpha waves, you can focus better while you're studying or getting ready for a big test like National Registry. So you go to a patient with altered mental status. What do you do next? What are you thinking about? Well, I have a mnemonic for you to remember. There's four S's in altered mental status. If it's not one of those four, think it's not an OT. Hey, so if you're new to medicine, and you gotta know these blunt thinners, you gotta know them. Here they are. Cumin Warfarin, Plavix, Pradaxa, what else? Xarelto, Eliquis, what else? Heparin, what else? Lovenox, see you next time. Okay, so you have a patient with a slow heart rate. 
The first thing you gotta think, is the patient symptomatic? If they're not symptomatic, we're gonna monitor. If they are symptomatic, are they stable or unstable? Meds versus pacing. Okay, so you have a patient in cardiac arrest. Okay, now think about it. The cardiac arrest patient can only be in a few rhythms, either VT or VF, that's shockable, or the other side, not shockable, asystole or PEA. Your patient has a very high heart rate. Okay, first thing, how high is the heart rate? Okay, is it narrow QRS or wide QRS? Are they stable or unstable? And finally, remember, stable is going to be meds. Unstable, we got a shock. You have dilated, restrictive, and hypertrophic. Some pearls. Dilated, we get enlarged. Restricted, stiffness of the heart. Hypertrophic, that's the young athlete who has hereditary cardiomyopathy. There it is. Is it time for you to go to medic school? You want to get experience as an EMT first. Start volunteering. Start working as an EMT. Get at least one year under your belt in a busy area. Then, study hard before you go in. When do you call a code? I got four tips for you. Number one is the arrest is not witnessed. Number two, there's no bystander CPR. Three, no ROSC. And there's 20 minutes of ACLS. And four, you deliver no shocks. Prolonged exposure to irritants could be a shipyard, could be smoking. Now, it's split up between chronic bronchitis and emphysema. Chronic bronchitis, think too much mucus. Emphysema, destruction of the alveoli. When we're talking about CPR, there's three things you gotta keep in mind. Number one is compression rate 100 to 120 a minute. Then we have compression depth about two inches. Then we have no excess ventilation. That's how you do it. What do you do if you see somebody go into cardiac arrest? Step one is call 911. Step two, focus on chest compressions. Step three is make sure to get an AED or call out for an AED to shock the patient. Syndrome that has to do with a high level of circulating cortical steroids. Could be due to an adrenal tumor. Also, could have to be with prolonged steroid use. Here are some facts. Everyone gets confused with distributive shock. Now here it is, abnormal vasodilation. There's three, they sick for septic shock, they sting for anaphylactic shock, and spinal for neurogenic shock. How can you remember drug cards better in paramedic school? The first thing is if you know what a drug does, if you understand the mechanism of action, the rest of the drug card will get filled in. Focus on the MOA and remember your dose. You've probably seen this patient before come in and say they're suffering from alcohol withdrawal. If you want a clear cut way, of, a way to know exactly, tell them to stick their tongue out and it will shake like crazy. You can't control the movement of your tongue. EKG tip. Okay, I hope you can hear me on this. Sinus rhythms come from the SA node. Atrial rhythms above the AV junction. Junctional rhythms from the junction. Ventricular in the ventricles. How do you know if a career in EMS is right for you? My friends, it's simple. If you really care about helping people and you want to learn in a fast-paced environment, EMS is right for you. If you're getting ready for EMT school, do these three things before you go in. One, learn medical terminology. Two, learn heart blood flow. And finally, number three, learn patient assessment before you go in. Hey, to any new EMT or paramedic out there, I want to give you a quick tip. Remember this, never just alone go off of dispatch because you never know what's actually happening on scene until you arrive on scene. I want to give you a quick tip about epinephrine. So first we have alpha-1, think vasoconstriction. Then we have beta-1, we have one heart that's going to increase the heart rate. Think beta-2, open our lungs, that's why we give epi. What is that? Entitled CO2 helps us in cardiac arrest to maintain good CPR. Helps us confirm our ET tube innovation. Also helps with the respiratory patient as well and helps with rust. You know, there's one disease that a lot of people forget about. This disease is called sickle cell anemia. Sickle cell is an abnormal shape of the red blood cells. They can get clogged in small arteries, painful. Okay, so you're sitting in EMT class and your instructor asks you, what is GCS? Here's how you remember GCS. 
GCS doesn't help me. EVM456. Hey, do you know what medication Giadon is? Giadon, also known as Ziprazidone, is known as an antipsychotic medication, commonly prescribed pill form for schizophrenic patients and bipolar disorder. What it is is hyperthyroid. What I mean by that is a swollen neck, protruding eyes, a goiter. If they're having hyperthyroid at a high level, you can see altered mental status in tachycardia. ACLS, H's, and T's for medics. H's, hypoxia, hypovolemia, hydrogen ion acidosis, hypo or hyperkalemia, hypothermia. Best way to remember your T's, split them up, trauma and thrombosis and toxins. Okay, right now we're never gonna forget heart blood flow ever again, heart blood flow. Think, the right ventricle's job is to pump, deoxygenate blood to the lungs. The left ventricle's job on this earth, pump blood to the rest of the body. Hey, so what exactly does aspirin do? Why don't we give it? The biggest thing that aspirin does is going to be antiplatelet aggregation. That's the biggest thing with aspirin. That's why we give it to patients who are having NMI. 324 milligrams oral. Heart block, day one. The first degree heart block isn't really a block. It's more of a conduction delay. The only thing that happens is the PRI interval is longer than 0.20 seconds. Every P wave has a QRS. Heart blocks and EMS, second degree type one. Think longer and longer and drops. So watch here, P, it's a longer PRI, a longer PRI. Drops the beat, goes back to normal. Longer, longer, longer drops. There it is. Heart blocks are medics day three, second degree type two. Look here, look here. So we go, PRI is the same, the same PRI, same PRI. Then boom, drops the beat. So you're going along, looks good, looks good, then you look like that. Easy way to remember heart blood flow. Give the right ventricle a job to do. It pumps deoxygenated blood to the lungs, gets the oxygen, brings it back through the pulmonary vein, left atrium, left ventricle. Give the left ventricle a job, pumps the rest of the body. Heart electrical conduction. Starts at the SA node, travels inner atria, inner nodal pathways, then AV node, the toll booth of the heart. Bundle of hiss down to the left and right bundle branches, finishing in the Purkinje fibers. Should probably have these meds at home. Hey, so there's two drugs I recommend everyone keeps in their home. One is Benadryl. If you get an allergic reaction, take some Benadryl. Number two is, what if you have chest pain? Think you're having a heart attack? Take four baby aspirin, 81 milligrams, chew them up. Hey, so in EMS, we cannot miss these five worst causes of difficulty breathing. Shout out to John Belinsky for this great mnemonic. Here it is. H-O-R-I-D. Don't make a horrid mistake and miss something with pulmonary symptoms. How to make a great radio patch into the hospital. Okay, first you wanna keep your patch to the hospital short and sweet. So first, how old is the patient? What are they complaining of? What's your primary thing you're thinking about? Vital signs, ETA. Okay, so hyperkalemia in emergency medicine starts off first with tall T waves. As it gets worse, YQRS. As it gets worse, a funky sine wave. One, two, three. There it is. Medication quick tip. Here are some common medications you might see on a diabetic's med list. Lantus, Novolog, Humulin, Humalog, a pill form, would be Glyburide, Glipizide, Metformin. IV tips. If you slap the skin, the veins will come. You can see here, I have no tourniquet on. You can see here just by slapping the skin a little bit. Look, vein and pumping and lowering the arm, veins are coming up. Great spot here, a straight vein. And then right here in the AC. IV tips, part two. Don't do this, do this. Don't be like a dive bomber, go right through the vein. What you want to do is get pretty flat with the vein, get flat, advance a little bit, and straighten that out. That's how you do it. Part three. The smaller the number, the bigger the catheter, that little piece of plastic that goes in the patient. So 1460, think trauma. 1820, think normal. 2224, think hard IV or pediatric. IV tips, day four. What do you do if you miss the IV and there's no flash? What you wanna do if you're just off the vessel, what you wanna do is you wanna slowly back out. Don't poke and prod around. What you wanna do is you wanna realign and then you wanna go at the vessel. That's how you do it. Day five. This IV tip right here will eliminate your rolling vein, okay? So what you wanna do here is you wanna grab like this and you wanna pull down hard traction. So down below the site and then grab like this on the other side. That's how you do it.
Learning medications on TikTok, part two. This medication is found very common in patients with epilepsy. That is a seizure disorder. It's also found to adult patients for bipolar depression. Here it is. Left bundle branch block. You gotta remember, is it new or old? Old, okay, we're well, watching out. New, it could be an acute stemming. Hey, if you're working in EMS, you might not know this, so listen up. Not every employer or job does this. You need to get liability insurance to protect yourself, your license, your career. Look up healthcare liability insurance. Males think pulmonary edema, CHF, early sign in pneumonia, bronchi, hypersecretion in the airways, think pneumonia, and finally wheezing, AAC, asthma, anaphylaxis, COPD. Here's a bone. Hey, let's talk some A and P here. So think about it like this. The humoral head is proximal to my hand. My hand is distal to my humoral head. Proximal, distal, that's medical terminology. Learning medications on TikTok, part one. This antipsychotic medication treats bipolar depression and schizophrenic patients. This medication is called Latuda. The medication is Latuda. Paramedic student tip. All right, now here's a tip, guys. Here's the biggest thing. If you have an EKG out in the field, what do you do if you're unsure about it? Keep burning EKG. Why? A STEMI gets worse over time. If you're going to medic school, you're gonna to wanna to do these three things before you go in. Number one is study your EMS meds you're gonna be using. Two, cardiology. And three, pharmacology. Hey, if you're in medic school, you gotta know these three drugs. These three medications treat a super fast heart rate. Here they are. Adenosine, think SVT. You have a beta blocker, metaprolol. Diltiazem is gonna be your calcium channel blocker. I wanna give you a quick tip when you're looking at a med list. Remember this, any drug that ends in VIR is an antiviral medication, okay? That's a quick tip to remember. AMT, here's going to be a great radio patch to the hospital. So step one is the who, the age complaint or the present condition. Number two is what you've done. Number three, vitals, ETA. How to study and pass your NREMT. Okay, NREMT, make sure you're studying at least three to four weeks out. Always think simple before advancing the answer and make sure to review your question twice. Look at the last line. National Registry tip. When you're looking at your question on National Registry, make sure to always review the question two times and read the last line. Your patient just overdosed on heroin. When a patient overdoses on an opiate, you may see bradycardia, hypotension, and most importantly, respiratory depression. They need to be ventilated Narcan. Here's a quick tip when it comes to pharmacology. Any medication that ends in O L O L is a beta blocker. Either blocks beta one or beta two receptor, but don't forget the crossover effect. PAL study tip. Remember on your PAL's exam, during respiratory distress, we have to act fast. We do not want children or pediatrics to go towards respiratory failure. Outcomes are poor. Hey, once I was taught as mnemonic, it absolutely changed my EMS career. Anybody with chest pain, you think, who's your papa? P-A-P-P-A. -P -P -A. Shout out to John Belinsky for this awesome mnemonic. You've helped patients. Part one of four to pass ACLS. So you have a patient, SVT, 130 over 80, alert and oriented. What are you going to do first in ACLS? Vega maneuvers. That doesn't work? Adenosine. Here's a great way to remember the risk factors of pulmonary embolism. So the first thing to remember is stasis. Any long train rides, plane rides, anything like that, long periods of stasis, any recent vascular surgeries, and also any other hypercoagulable states. What about birth control? All right, so let's talk about benzodiazepines here. So anything that ends in AM, think about it. Medazolam, alprazolam, lorazepam. AM, that ending, it's a benzo, sedative. Pneumonia inflames your bronchioles and your alveoli in your lungs, you know, where oxygen and carbon dioxide goes in and out. Now, here are the risk factors right here on the bottom. That is precisely what pneumonia is. 
Diseases you have not heard about. Okay, this disease has to do with the adrenal gland and it has to do with cortical steroids in the body. So, what that means, there's too high a level of cortical steroids, Cushing's syndrome. What exactly is schizophrenia? Well, it's got to do with recurrent episodes of psychotic behavior hallmarked by paranoia. Paranoia has to do with intense feelings of mistrust. Now, here are some meds on the screen here. Medication tip. Two of the most common benzodiazepines you'll see prescribed. Xanax, Alprazolam, Lorazepam, Ativan. They're sedatives to treat anxiety. Antidote, Flamazenil. EMT shock tip. Remember, in hypovolemia, what's the first thing that's going to happen? You're going to be losing blood. The body is going to get a little more tachycardic. Hypo, not enough. Volemia, volume. Hey, what's a SSRI? What's that? These medications treat anxiety and depression. Some of the most common ones are, so we have Zoloft, Celexa, Lexapro, Paxil, Prozac, SSRI. Yes, hit them with the four S's. Sugar, stroke, seizure, sepsis. If it's not one of those, Narcan stands for N, sneaky overdose. O2, check a pulse off. T is for trauma, sneaky trauma. If it's not, routine care. Okay, so a patient in SVT, but they're stable. BP, mental is okay. Start with vagals. That doesn't work. We go to identity. You have your doses there. Where do we go from there? Think. Two other friends. Metaprolol or cardizone. So local lacerations, edema. Systemic could be a host of things up into including death. What this means? You gotta irrigate, pain management, life support, go to the ER. Be careful with those bars. Anybody studying for their national registry boards, listen up. One of the biggest questions on the NREMT boards from EMT, AMT, paramedic is this. Remember, no stroke is a stroke until you check a blood sugar. So let's talk about EKGs. So EKGs, first, we have the P wave. Stop saying depolarize. The atria fires. QRS, ventricle fires. T wave, repolarization, relax. So your fight or flight response just got activated. Think about it, what's gonna happen next? Your heart rate's gonna increase, your blood pressure increase, vasoconstriction, your lungs open up, you can breathe better, you can see better, your eyes open up, dilate. This is a pulse oximeter, also called pulse oximetry. Now, what it does is measure the percentage of oxygen inside your body. Now, two quick tips I wanna give you. The lung sound you have to know is wheezing. You hear wheezing, think AAC, asthma, anaphylaxis, COPD.